What's going on, folks? Uh, today was supposed to be kind of just a Lazio pregame, but there's so much shenanigans that came out within the last couple of days. I think it's worth covering it, and we're going to cover that for you. So we'll talk about so some Bremer stuff. Uh, obviously, we'll talk about Lazio Juve, and we also have a very, very fine, handsome guest that we have uh, imported all the way from Qatar. Uh, Misak, how are you, Habibi? I'm very good, Habibi. Everybody's okay. Everybody's happy. And yes. uh, the other double Ds, how you guys are doing? You guys, you guys aren't really that important. It's like the triple Ds now. It's DDDD right now. Love. And nobody, no guy says no to triple Ds, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and now, you can <laughs> proceed. Hey, the more Ds, uh, the better. Yeah. Um, I think they uh, go back like... to AM or G Cups. Uh, anyway. What? Jesus. <laughs> uh, so it is the international panel today, if you guys haven't... Uh figured this out so obviously representing canada with uh, the italian background dash has america i'm wearing, a, I'm background. wearing, a, flannel. I'm wearing a flannel like that's you the most american thing ever flannel. nice uh german day from germany do you have any other background with you any like deep-seated roots or are you just like the vodafone hat i think he's frozen oh he's frozen he, fro- he gave me that <laughs> oh Oh, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. You are back. Yes. So, what, what did you say? Okay. So we know you're German, but do you have like any deep seated roots like going yeah. back? Uh, yeah. Uh, I have uh, Turkish roots. Uh, Turkish. We are right. from Turk, uh, Christian or Syrian Orthodox uh, Christians from, from Turkey, basically. All right. Very cool. See, we're learning more. And then Misa, yep. uh, Lebanon, I'm Armenian, Lebanese. Armenian Lebanese, uh, but you live in uh, in Qatar. I work in Qatar. So there you go. Like, look at all the countries we got. It's very international today. Yes, very very diverse panel. Yeah, Uh, which is good to uh, explore all the diverse topics today, such as sports gambling, um, maybe some business acumen, and Mm -hmm. uh, some tactical breakdowns. So, um, yeah, you guys. I think German Dave, you were and, you got you juicy. Missing all Mexican. We do, Frankie. That's right. Yes, we got all. Oh, there's tons of Mexicans too out in the chat. All over. We got yeah. everyone. Um, so German Dave, <laughs> you're the, you're the one that wanted to like get into the drama today. Like we're at work and and you're like, guys, tomorrow's live. There's so much to talk about. I didn't even know yeah, what was it, going on. It, I was at uh, work. It, honestly, it went completely off uh, yesterday. All, all the news. So we can start with Bremer if you want to. That was uh, the first one that got posted by Fabrizio. I didn't follow any of the other X channels, so I don't know what their opinion was. But yeah, uh, like Fab- Fabrizio reported that Bremer has a release clause for 65 million euro that is active from the 2025 uh, from the start of the 2025 season, basically. Yeah, okay. so and, and that got people riled up. Yeah, the Jimmys, yeah. The Jimmys are rustled <laughs> uh, so and much. So. My first initial uh, reaction was was like I like I wrote in Discord, sixty five million is a bit cheap. But then I thought more about it, and like we had a pretty good discussion uh, discussion in Discord as well. I think honestly, uh, center backs won't are. I think for, for you, uh, you can chime in as well in a second. But uh, for me, I think the the time where like clubs will pay ninety to one hundred uh, million uh, euros or pounds because uh, the only uh, teams that are able to pay uh, that money uh, is the Premier League. So I think the sixty five million is basically a backup plan if we don't uh, if we we are not able. To to sell him this summer for the price that we want, then we have still the 65 million release clause, uh, like in the, uh, yeah, hidden ba- in basically, or in a, as our backup uh, plan. It is still positive money flow, but Misak, what's your take on this? My take is easy. Okay, uh, firstly, they said that also, like, if somebody comes and matches uh, the 65 70 million, uh, we can you can even listen to it from this summer. My idea is the reason it doesn't go for more right now in the current state of football is that 
if you see it, nobody appreciates a guy like Bremer anymore. A guy that is a classic defender, like, like the normal defender that we grew up with, who was very physical, very hardworking, very uh, brutish defender. They go, f- they're going more and more. Like uh, uh, defending is an afterthought now. Like if, if you can also defend, it's good, but it shouldn't be your main trait. The, 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 the center backs that are going for a lot of money are the ones that are great at the with the ball at their feet. How much better they are with the ball at their feet, the higher their cost. And if they can defend, depending on how much they can defend, their ability of defending, the price gets better and better. If you are, I get my grip. I think the 70 million is the threshold right now for a guy that's just a pure defender, pure, pure defender. And you see already how much our team right now, when we try to build up, has an issue when Bremer is on the ball. That's why we always try to give it to Danilo or Locatelli that are also not like perfect on the ball, as, as we know. So it's 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 a logical logical thing. Right now, in this situation, with his character, it's a, it's a good price, okay? Now, what's our next step? We sell him, and who do we get? Who are we replacing with? It will depend on the coach that we're gonna get. That's another topic. So, Dash, before we run some numbers, do you have yeah. hard facts on this one? For what? For the Bremer thing? For Bremer, yeah. As far as the the release clause, my, no, my just only... whatever, just your opinion. Yeah. Oh, I mean. I'm a little bit surprised that it took him this long to sit there and just pop. Oh, hey, by the way, he signed a contract like four months ago. And I oh, yeah, that, yeah, we just found <laughs> out he had a release clause. It's like, I, I wonder if I Bremer's think the agent, agent licked it. I think if the agent licked it to the to the sources there. OK, like this summer, uh, let everybody know that he's available. Yeah, that might be part of it. But I also want to just point out it just shows how little all of us know and it's not just us here i'm saying like the whole community if this is just yep. like guys like yep. romano coming out all of a sudden he didn't know if he knew he would have been making bank off uh all the posts he was going to put up so i'm surprised we don't know he started already he started now that making one. the moolah getting the pay from the agent now he is yeah <laughs> yeah now now he's you know he's twerking for the prem uh my, my thing with this is it's just i'm i'm a little bit perplexed because like for example this is one of the few weekends that I watched more international football than I normally do because I, I, I just don't care, right? Like, for me, I don't really care, but there was a couple of players I needed to keep eyes on. Uh, the one thing I, I'm still kind of astonished with is that Bremer didn't play for Brazil. And it's just like, and it's stupid. I think it's stupid by Brazil because it's just like they keep on this this Joga BS and, and like they're playing yeah. defenders that can't even defend. And it's like you have... Their starting center back was a defender that only got two starts the entire season. And it's just like, really? You guys aren't you guys aren't playing Bremer? It's like like to me, it's like if I'm Bremer, I'm like, I'm shooting myself in the foot thinking I should have took the Italian citizenship instead. Cause like, yeah. come on, Cal- Calafiore or Bongiorno, like he's starting over Bongiorno. Like Bongiorno was was terrible against uh against Venezuela. But you were not happy with the bad, at all. Yeah, he had a bad showing, honestly. He's a great he's a good player. At Torino, I watch him. He's a very solid player. He had a bad showing. He was great against U- Ukraine during the critical time, if you remember, on that uh, one match. He was great in Ukraine. I rate uh, Van Giorno, but him being the sole replacement of Bremer, I will be scared, to be honest. Uh, there's also Calafiore on deck. Calafiore, yes. Calafiore. With wit, though, the coach that made Calafiore to what it is now. Yeah. And you know, when it comes to like the movement and whatnot, you know, I understand like the agent leaking it, but how much of it is partially also like, for example, events is potentially leaking it as well to say people like, hey, come get this guy. Because um, mm-hmm. honestly, be I, anybody, I think, I think it's not out of the realm that it got leaked by by Juventus because. Uh, it benefits it benefits us more than him, so he will get sold anyway. Like either with a release clause if a club uh, club pays it, or or it will be this summer. It benefits us though because uh, this summer we are able to to still earn whatever we want. The only like uh, baseline uh, there there is is that if a offer comes in around the the uh, the the release clause then we would agree to the, uh, to that deal basically 
so we don't lose any, uh, any money uh, in comparison from this summer to, ne to next summer. But this summer we may uh, earn even more money on him, basically. So that's why I think uh, this uh, news got leaked now because uh, clubs now can can basically come in with with their offers and try to convince us. Well, and then let's let's take this into effect as well, right? Who who is one of the main anchors of why you can't play with a back four? Bremer. Allegedly, him. allegedly, Bre yeah, and him, the, and him. that's the thing, right? Uh, if allegedly. we if him we him are he... going for a back four, hard, and we're we're looking to like revamp things, Bremer is a hundred percent a piece in which he can do that. Yes, 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 exactly, and that's why he's not playing with Brazil apparently because his coach in training seeing that he's not comfortable in the back four. Okay, so. The, oh, I know a lot of people uh, love him, and I like him a lot. He's a great player. Yeah, he's great. We we do love he's, him. He's a good player. Like he is, he isn't an underperforming player. He's like a very, he's a stud, perfect stud. But is it is he yep. irreplaceable? Nobody's think, irreplaceable. No, no. That's the thing. Nobody in this team is irreplaceable. Nobody in this so world why... is irreplaceable. Like we're all there's billions. Sadly, of us. yeah, capitalism <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> Capitalism has lost the humanity, uh, lost, huma lost humanity, but that's a different topic. But as our football team, like we don't have somebody that's not irreplaceable. Everybody's irreplaceable because everybody's quality can be improved upon. They, their ceiling can be increased and stuff. I say you're about to trigger all of the Chiesa bots. They're they're about to lose their mind oh when you say God. that. <laughs> they are, they already have. They're they're posting videos yeah. of how everyone's Brother, coming at them. <laughs> we, we, look, I like Chiesa. I I really like Chiesa, but the guy has to fucking wake up, man, and realize where he is. Realize that he cannot do the same trick as he can could before cutting in and trying to shoot shoot that millisecond you need that that little pace that you needed beforehand before the injury that he had. That could have made that space to get the shot up. He doesn't have it anymore. So instead of that, instead of adapting and listening to what the coach is asking, he is doing what he whatever he wants to do. Okay, be it. At the end of the day, we are losing the guy that's gonna maximum maximum score ten goals a season. I mean, ten he goals. Has, he hasn't scored more than eight. He hasn't scored, he hasn't more, scored than eight. more than ten. He hasn't scored more than ten in in his career in the league. Alone in the league, ten goals, brother. We were asking was the McKinney to score ten goals. If you remember back <laughs> yeah, then, I do so, remember that. So our expectations <laughs> is just crazy at the moment. Like our expectations is lost. Maybe, we, maybe we are the problem. Us fans, like not us, four of us, but the fans. We expected are expecting from this guy something that he's not. Okay, maybe we are expecting because of couple of performances here and there. In, in six months, but but if you watch Kiesa's career, he's always been up and down, up and down. And th that's him. He has he's a moment player for me. He's like in in a deep moment, in a heart, in a in a very like crucial moment. Maybe you can use a guy like him because he thrives in that environment. Pro maybe, but in normal like game in game out on a, just weekends, I don't feel like he's a guy. He's, he's, he's going to be not, a guy that's going to be guaranteed to for us. So we have to look for somebody that's consistent. He's we almost didn't start a show where we didn't completely like Turkey is up. So I, I um, it, it's, it's just difficult. Theme. It, it's really <laughs> difficult because, like, for example, you know, there's folks that will sit there and be like, oh, well, Kies is incredible. Okay, great. What's what's your data point? What's what's your, what's your what's the review? I, I just I think he's being ruined. I, I think this. I think that we're all triggered. Like, We've seen too much. I, I know. Look, <laughs> On the whole basis of right now, I think it is we have reached the end point of uh, Mr. Max. I know full respect to him and a lot of blame to him, which is not totally on his fault because it's not just him. It's a two-part way because I feel like they aren't responding to what he's saying anymore from now on for the last six, seven games because how much he's pushing, how much he's changing, there's nothing, nothing going on. Not, there is no response from the team. Okay, so that's that's my reason of changing him. It's like it's a dead cause. Like, what's the point of keeping him for one more year or even renewing him? The, if there is no more touch anymore. The only, the we, only way the only way it works for him is if you completely overhaul the squad. Like that, that's the. Do only we way have the right. money for you it? Don't. No, you that's don't. Exactly. And do we want to overhaul a squad for Chiesa specifically? 
Be- because the thing, the thing that really kind of makes me mad about this whole situation, and and I don't know if this is the journalist being stupid or just posting stuff for clickbait, but they stated okay. that it's a bridge contract if he renews and he's hesitant because he wants to see if there's a new coach because it's not because of a relationship with Allegri. It's just tactical differences. And it's like, brother, you ain't good enough to dictate tactical, diff- tactical preferences. My, my thing is, my thing is, okay, let's say tactical. And then Tiago Mota comes and then also he feels that there's a problem tactically. What do we do then? Mm-hmm. We change the coach again. Exactly. So, I, that's why. That's why. Let's say. That's that's why I'm all in for like changing the coach so that this bullshit narration stops anymore. We changed it. But at the same okay. time, won't you, won't you just love to those people that are like, we'll see, we'll see. He's gone. I know people. He's. Wouldn't you just love to see another year of Max just to fuck him? I I have too much <laughs> headache from, from everybody. <laughs> like, just, just just let's let's go. It's better for everybody. It's healthy for everybody. Okay. I, I, I don't like healthy with, relationships though. I think it's more. I, that's right. you. I like I like healthy relationships. <laughs> I, 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 I like to be in a healthy mental state. To be honest, you see Juventus being nobody using their brain when they're talking about the Juventus is kind of pissing yeah. me off. No, for so sure, a hundred percent. So 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 like I'm like okay. Let's let's do what you say because we tried two years and cetera, et cetera, and we, three years, and it's okay. It's not at the UV level as it should be. Move him on, well, and I, let's see. I think what's or what's going to be really funny uh, if Mota does become the coach is they get pissed off of how pragmatic he is, and, and like the difference between Mota and Allegri is like for example Mota's style or his technique of play is heavily invert it's inverted it's heavily important on wingers that can invert and take shots because Xerxes is not the focal point of the attack which is completely the opposite of how Dusan wants to play yeah so with with Mota Dusan's numbers are going to take a catastrophic nosedive his assist totals in a short path it's not that far to go but but will he will he be able to interpret the role like Xerxes does. That's a, that's a question that you're going to ask to Dusan Vlaovic. Because I feel like if Diago Muto comes, uh, one more year of Dusan Vlaovic, and then 2025, you say goodbye to him too. Because I don't see the technical ability or the ceiling that Xerxes has that he can do. I, if you watch Xerxes, he's like at number 10, no. playing as a number 9. He And the no, number the, 9 the problem, is, is Lewis Ferguson... Is their striker <laughs> the midfielder that we're gonna take is acts like their striker because he he runs into the channels and everything he does everything there as a as a number nine. Go ahead, German Dave. No, I just <laughs> wanted to add uh, uh Vlaovic and not right now, like consistently, you know. And I don't know how he will do if we like uh, uh, give him another role. I don't know if he has uh, the the football IQ that uh, to to adapt to it to a different role because it took him like half the the season until January to go off for a couple of games, and then his consistency uh, di- died uh, off again. Uh, yeah, he is up and down, up and down. So let's see because it's going to be position. The th- diff- major difference between Thiago Mota and Allegri is the possession, possession and pressure. Okay, they have high, high, high numbers of possession. They try to kick the ball as much as possible and they try to counter press as, as fast as possible until a certain point where they feel like they're going to be run over, then they run back and defend in 11. So, like, it's a pragmatic style. Like, when, whenever they want to lick in the, uh, lick in the, wor- the rewards, they, they do it. But the, the, the way they do it is completely different to what we do. Okay, so let's see if that the change of way is gonna make this team massively improve. Because I'm gonna give him this year one year, and then second year we got to judge because uh, the narration about Max Allegri being the like the Sith Lord of Juventus has to stop somewhere. This is why I understand why the United Nations doesn't get anything done. Um, man, <laughs> yeah, we we because have not like. Them. I still haven't even got to the Bremer number, so I got to reel things back a little bit here. <laughs> I thought <laughs> because okay. is there something? I thought we did. I thought yeah, we did. yeah. I want to break down some numbers as well oh. because because we're trying to educate the fan base as best we can, right? Because our rhetoric as of late, and we've kind of just been jabbing in between, is these people, these social media accounts. Uh, you know, they're they're just they got the feels, but they don't got the numbers. So I'm gonna take something here. Uh, 
couple news pieces anyways. I'm going to jump around with how you guys just jumped around to uh, Bremer, Chiesa, and Max Lashmata. So, first off, and this is coming straight from Beppe. Uh, he broke it down really well. Keep in mind, we don't know the actual hard numbers. So, this is like general numbers. And this is his response yesterday to everyone losing their mind. Okay. Yep. So, we have to think about how at least the Italian league, how they like to amortize the worth of their players, right? Every every league amortizes. Yeah, they they all do. I, I don't think so much in North America or Mexico or some of these other countries, but like in Europe, they, and, they and certainly by the, do. Do they even spend the more than... One second. Do they even spend more than 10 million on a player? Yeah, uh, Toronto and Insignia. <laughs> that, that's his salary. But not his, that's his salary, but he didn't buy him for 10 million, no? No, no they did no. Okay, that's um, my point. I'm just, I'm just saying, I don't know and, 100% uh, if this is across the board, but we know for sure. And, and I just... Dave, and I just wanted to add uh, all the amortization rules and contract rules, etc., are are the same across the whole uh, UEFA uh, pyramid. So okay, so if we know not, for sure it's not with only UEFA. here Europe, in, Europe. in Italy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I was just trying to caveat that that it's not like this is across the board necessarily, but at least within yeah. our construct, this is how things work. So at the end of the season, I'm quoting Pepe here. At the end of the season, yeah. he's worth 25 million in the financial books because you paid back two seasons already. If you sell him for 60 mil, you make a profit of 35. If the mm -hmm. clause is valid from summer 2025 and you keep him one more season, you have a prob profitability of plus or minus 45 million because we've already paid yep. so many seasons of him that. Yep. On the books, if we get 60, 65, that is all in the black. That's all extra money that we get. Yep. Now, Which I don't one know, more. Right? Oh, sorry, Dave. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I just, there's, there's a little add on that came out this morning as well uh, from Tuto Sport via around Juventus. I mean, take it for what it is. But there was an addendum that was included in his contract. Uh, that allows for cancelling of the release clause. Faced with official offers at 65 million euro, the club could in fact neutralize them by increasing the salary of the player to a predetermined number. <laughs> Changes things, doesn't it? Uh, I'm, for me, no, you just sell him still. Like if, he's got, if, if he's a guy that's intending on going to the Premier League and the agent is leaking rumors, then we, I know where, where the intention is. Okay, But, but the rhetoric that... of the of the management not knowing, and I guess I sort of preface that, is that people are losing their mind because they're saying the management doesn't know what they're doing. This is insane. What's going on? That's, yeah. that's no, they kind don't. of the angle. But I think it is like they're going to give that money if he's actually worth, if, if next year, he, he's, for example, he doesn't leave this summer. If he next year, in following year, under another coach, let's say, if he can actually be better than what he is, if he shows any improvement in his technical ability, then we can give him the more money and cancel the, the thing. But that's that's the thing. We, the management will decide on that. But we didn't get fleeced. We didn't get our pants dropped like all these other... No way, no way, no way, no way. Which yeah, is what like, people are claiming no. is happening. And we no. also have to remember... What if this is just the will of the player? He's like, yes, I'll continue to sign on, but I want an out. The just out will be club yep. friendly, yep. you know, to, to a point where it's, you know, realistic. Uh, but th this is where it is. He will likely one day go to the Premier League. I I'm going to assume he's he's kind of expressed he's this before. It's Brazilian. You're going to yes, go to the yes, Premier yeah. League. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think he's gone this this this, uh, this summer. Honestly, he I might think be. Uh, yeah. like like I like I said before, I think the release clause is just a just a backup plan, so you don't lose out on on money if you're not able to sell him now, because if you're not uh, if we don't sell him for seventy seventy five or whatever this season, then he will be definitely gone next season for for the release clause. So it's I just a backup him. plan, in my opinion. I think I think this summer Juventus is having like a big ass clear up. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest we're gonna have in, in modern history, to be honest. Kostic is leaving. Yep. Ealing Jr. is leaving. Nonje is getting sold. Apparently now I'm the, the official official rumors, like both of them pure sold. Uh, uh Weston McKenney not renewed the contract, 
not renew the contract because we're uh, we're ball, uh, low balling him sold and because he's not gonna accept and they're not gonna give it more sold case is gonna stay i feel like that one year thing he does i think it's close because even romeo agresti said that they're they're agreeing on that one year extension which is okay because he's, he's staying uh who else is leaving like the shell you if he's alive actually Sule, in my opinion. Sule, Sule, i think i think Sule, Sule, if it, Bremer leaves, okay, at seven is Bremer. Bremer leaves, I don't think we're going to cash in on Sule or something. Maybe even Sule. You don't know what happens. Uh, Rabio, I don't think we're going to renew Rabio because he's, he's still asking prices very high, to be honest. And plus, next year, from next year, there is no more, uh, the, the what's the name? I forgot, growth decree is what we call it. The growth, yeah, the growth decree. decree, not, decree yeah. Yes, yeah. where you pay less. For the salary of the player, if he stays uh, in the first five years, the foreign player when he comes, there's no longer that because it would be six years at Juventus. So you well, they got rid of it the... anyways. It's dead. Yeah, they got they got uh, completely. It's going to be denied from next year. So it's even worse. It's, he's going to be costing 40 million on the books, which is which is a lot. 40 million for Rabiot. Yeah. Uh, Chesney. They are. If you listen to the latest rumor, like uh, they want to cut his wages, but he's still not agreeing. So you don't know what happens with Chesney. So like you see, like there is a lot of movement that's gonna happen. Dean Houston, we don't know what's gonna yeah. happen with Dean Houston. 40, 50 million in some of the comes, there's gonna sell him too. He's so like well, there's bidding wars starting on it. Like people yes. teams want him. Teams so want him. We can capitalize financially right now. A lot from him. A lot, so much from him. More than Sule, you can capitalize on you know it's like funny. His price as an 18-year-old is gonna be very close to Bremer that a 27-year-old. Even though defending wise, Bremer eats up Houston. Not no question asked. No right. question. The ball playing. But exactly. That is where the meta is directing us. That is why the cost is like that. You know, like it, it, it is all linked, sadly. Because nobody's and plus with the new IFAB rules about the, the offside being more fucked up now, nobody's gonna defend anymore. It's just about scoring more. It's like playing tennis. <laughs> not uh, not football. Yeah, every every league has life. done that though, right? Like hockey, basketball never really had too much of an issue. But no, I mean, because it's always already. But the I mean, Knicks got 140 points against the Raptors the other night. So I mean, back in the day, you yeah. get like 70, 80. Like all the sports are just like offense, offense. That's yeah, exactly. Days. Like I, I remember that when I like Michael Jordan. If you watch the documentaries, their scores were never reaching 100. And now oh, it's like 80 to 74. That. Now it's like exactly. 140 to 125. Yeah, like because I think they they made it so that everybody tries to do a triple shot. They try to do a three pointer every time, so you get more points. Math, math and statistics. And I mean, Luca Luca Donich is like yeah, Luca and uh, shoot, I forgot the uh, name. Joker. Joker. They're both like, dude, defense Jokic. here in the United States is soft as hell. He's like, in Europe, I'd get a couple of bumps and bruises when I'm driving to the basket. Yep. Here, they don't even defend. I, yeah, yeah there's not continuing on Juventus. Miretti is also on loan, maybe even a, a piece to get Lewis Ferguson. Uh, yeah. who else? Like, you saw, I'm already everyone like, we have 13 players that possibly are gonna leave, Sandra's and until now we have three oh. solid names Lewis Ferguson as a 25 billion buy, uh, as reported by Mikro De Natale. Oh. The 25 million midfielder is him. There is still a 45 million midfielder that we're gonna get, and Calafiori. And yeah. Felipe Anderson. Yeah. Yeah, Felipe just... Anderson as the backup winger. Okay. And, and I'll just put this piece in news to essentially confirm what you're saying or what we're all saying at a sense. Uh, this is Tuto Sport, but all players are transferable with the right offer. All except Yildiz. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Everyone. Because Yildiz, Yildiz. Yeah, I agree. Has, I agree with that. Yeah. Yildiz has the potential of being another Pogba for us. That's why. And yeah, Yildiz he can has play a... across the entire front line instead of exactly. one small yep. corner. Exactly. Yep. Uh, and, but, and Yildiz, but I watched... Yildiz... Yeah, sorry. Continue, continue. No, uh, go for it. No, uh, uh, Yildiz is also say... the... Ah, the... uh, sorry. You said go for it, so I went for it. Misak, you're right. going. Go. Oh, right. Okay, I'm going. Right. So my point was just that uh, even though I, I didn't see him playing well with Turkey on the second game, he was good for 10 minutes and then he lost it as a, as a false nine. Maybe maybe he cannot play as a false nine. But I he think can he's play too as small. Winger, second, winger, second striker, left winger, right winger. He, he's, he's too small to be a focal point. He's too small, too young. He yeah. doesn't have the physicality yeah. for it. 
Yeah, a bit short for it. Yeah, yes. and, and and Max is gonna ruin young players anyways. And Max ruined his career. Yeah, Go yeah, ahead, because Dave. we we plan everything yeah. on Mr. Max and no, not, uh... not like our future and ourselves. <laughs> Go German Dave. Go. No, I just wanted uh, to to add that Yildiz is the only player uh, in our squad that I would say has wo actually world class potential. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't think uh, Fajuli is good, maybe great, but not world class. Mir not Miretti still the jury is out, but we have seen seen lots of him. But Yildiz is the only player in our squad. Maybe maybe Hoisen you can uh, throw him in there, but Hoisen is also inconsistent. Those are the only like defending wise, yes. Actual world, yeah. But those are the only world class talents that we have in the squad. Every like, if I can, I would keep Hoisen all day. But if we get big offers from, I would even sell him for Miss Yield. This is the only like actually not uh, touchable, not touchable, touchable player. You you want to have yeah. one youngster that you want to bet on. You don't want to have five. If you have five, yeah. you're just asking for trouble. It because works in FIFA. It works in FIFA. It doesn't work in real life. And I, and I don't understand, like, and I call them football hipsters, but these hipsters that are going around, is just like, man, Italy needs to put in a bunch of 18 and 19 and 21. That's, that's what they the have. Under 21s are for. That's what they the have. Under 21s are for. That's yeah. why people Italy are so not making to the fucking World Cup. Sorry. No, but anyway, let's continue. But it's just like, for example, for me, it's like, I look at I look at the midfield, and for me, it's like, for me, like, Locatelli is just going to be, like, in my opinion, similar to a Jack Bonaventura, right? Like, it's not He's average, not going to be incredible, not going to be – well, Bonaventura is kind of bad sometimes, but it's like that. Same sometimes thing with good, sometimes bad. Yeah, sometimes – and then like, for example, with Fajoli, it's almost like Ricardo Montolivo in a sense, right? Where it's just like he starts off good oh, when he's yeah. young and then he peters out. I, I'm sorry. I don't see a high ceiling for Fajoli. Sometimes really it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. Sometimes it may be good, oh, sometimes it may be shit. Whatever. Listen to it twice. It's on loop. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, I think the Fajoli thing is a physically he he's I don't know why he's 23, 22, but he's I don't know last he doesn't run enough as a midfielder, which is an issue. Yeah, that's that's like he's not physically there for that role. No, and that's a yeah. good segue, really, talking about Fajoli and his issues. Oh, you want to talk about Sandro and getting busted? Sandro Canali. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we we went for half an hour. I have something on Chiesa still, but we always end on trash and Chiesa, so I'll save that for the back end. All right. I mean, we can talk about Tonali for a bit uh, because Tonali is an idiot. But uh, I hope <laughs> okay. he gets help. That's as simply as that. Okay, let's so, give so let's give the people the background. And and honestly, <laughs> all right. So, do you want? Uh, what I posted yesterday, just the the report. Yeah, bring bring it up. Let's sh let's show some. Uh, All right. Some media here so, for the guys. so um, just to f to freshen up the memory a little bit. Uh, Tonali was uh, in front of the Sporting Court in the in the Premier League from August uh, till October, where he got busted for for the for for his betting uh, back at AC Milan. And while he was investigated officially, and he known about the investigation, the dude thought, "Hey, let's breach uh, the fifty uh, the the betting rules in the Premier League fifty times." <laughs> and yeah, and he got busted for for those as well, and is uh, now allegedly uh, being investigated again. And yeah, they will throw if if that is true and. Sorry, but it looks like it's true. They will throw the whole book at him. I don't know, but they said that he can have co -concur concurrent, uh, concurrent uh, ban. Basically, like uh, maybe prolongation of the ban that he's already in, which was gonna end in a couple of months, by the way. So now he will get seven more months. But, so he will be back. But in, in other time. cases, <laughs> doesn't matter. No, no, if it, if it, if it would Tony, be two or three it? bets, I agree. But man, Ivan Tony got hundred something. <clears throat> Ivan Tony got hundred something bets. So yeah, you're right. You may be seven, right. Eight, seven to eight months he got. Okay, he'll get four more months, five more months, and that's it, basically. Yeah, yes. I, I don't like. I, I, I've, no, I've always right. had this. Yeah. I've always had this argument. I don't like sports betting I, I think sports betting is terrible because now you open up the integrity of the game because you have yes. you know tonality money, on, money to lose yep. 
because for example now you have tampering and and to make things even worse now is like for example you'll have like you'll have sports tv channels so like for example espn in the united states has a sports book now and you don't think that they're going to try to influence stuff to get more money out of things now by contacting players or having them do stuff it's it's extremely frustrating and and to me there there should have been like a zero tolerance like if you too much money if you yeah i know i am saying like for example if you're a player and you get busted betting your your career is over like that that should be in my opinion that that's what i want it to be where it's like your career is done you're not allowed to play professional sports because now you look at it and you look at like for example because we had this conversation when fajula got busted he played some really shitty games before he got banned and it's like you're oh, sitting yeah. there and you're like what happened to this guy like how much how much of it was him him doing it right because Syria never released whether or not he bet on Syria matches or he's like allegedly I never bet on Juventus stuff but he could have told somebody hey we're playing against the Swallow. I think he betted on Syria. I think he betted on Syria but not on Juve. Yeah, like he and and the other thing it makes you beg the question right where Fajoli could have told somebody hey bet on me to complete less than three passes a game. And I'll do it. Like, for example, betting stuff like that, because that happened a couple of days ago in Toronto where it was like a bench player. Uh, NBA, the Raptors were talking. Yeah, the Raptors, right? The guy barely yep. played before. Yeah, the NBA, but, yep. uh, he only played like three or four minutes and then left the game. And people were investing $20,000, $30,000 on his stats to be under. And everyone's like, why is this guy popping off on the prop bets? He doesn't even play. Why are people I, betting? I didn't even know who he was. I nobody knew who the fuck he was. <laughs> but like I'm I'm from Toronto, right? Like I should maybe, but no, I, I didn't even know. Him. I'm I'm not I'm not uh, for for Fagioli thing. I remember because he got an injury, that massive injury he got in the Sevilla game where he was very good. I remember that game. He was really he was excellent. He was creating chances, and that what I forgot who broke his fucking cav- clavicle, and then we lost this. Lost it anyway. Probably South uh, uh, no, Serbian. Yeah, he was uh, Serbian. I wasn't remember. it against Cremonese or something like that? He, where no, he scored, he scored against Cremonese. He scored against Cremonese. He played well. And then following up with Sevilla, in the Cremonese game, we lost Pogba, if you remember. It started crying and stuff mm. on the pitch. And it has been a disaster. There's two, yeah. two years with injuries. Yeah. It, 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 it's a chaos. But when there is chaos and the storm, the storm ends eventually. But it's all Max's this... fault. Ah, let the guy take the heat. <laughs> if, like, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not gonna protect him or protect. No, the, I, but we dumb. can't keep going to me either, right? That's again. I'm just making fun no, of the no, no. how it's like. Yeah, complete. Community scheme. is dumb. The community is dumb. It's... If you look at the matrix, Juventus has massively improved yeah. this year, even though they aren't able to translate it. This Numbers don't nine... exist, man. You can't have a conspiracy if you look at facts. <laughs> oh, the thing is, the thing is, yeah. some some idiots come and use like data whenever it is suiting their narrative, not in the general data of everything. No, no, no. If you look at his PPDA, which is the pressure amount. We are one of the worst pressuring teams. Well, yeah, because that's not our style, dumbass. Like, that is not our style. It's not like we are trying to be a possession and pressure, pre- high pressure, uh, pressure team, and we're failing in it. No, that's not that's not our style. We, we weren't there in the first place. Why are you looking at that metric? It's like I'm asking, uh, I don't know, uh, like a bird, how fast can he swim? I, what kind of question is that? No, that, that's not the question. I, uh, for example, Allegri. I know the team is defensive. I have to look at the defensive metrics, and we're great in the defensive metrics. And data shows that that right now, what our major problem is mentally, mentally, the whole players, and I think a bit of himself, he cannot motivate the players, and the players aren't being motivated. So that is when you got to cut off the ties because something has to change. Yeah, and think, in my right. opinion, both have to change. Players have to, because some players are put on a pedestal for no fucking reason at all. No, that the reason at all. Well, it's because they're yeah. white Italians. Stop being racist. Nobody is. <laughs> nobody deserves to wear this badge, this badge for their life. There is nobody that deserves it because nobody has shown anything to deserve it. No, okay? I, that, but that's from saying that's that, an excuse. That's that's. Yes, like, yes, I agree with yeah, you, Dave. I yeah, agree. That's, but, okay. But some so fans clear. complain. <laughs> some fans complain that Juventus is lowering the standards. No, you fans are lowering the standards because you're putting players that shouldn't be on a pedestal onto that pedestal that they don't deserve to be. Sorry for my rant, but this no, is the no. truth. 
It is but, true. But this is, but no, this no. is the truth. Right. You see other fan channels comparing, like, oh, the, because uh, the, the coach is bad because these players aren't showing. If these players are good enough, they show. If they are great enough, they show. Like Tony Cruz and Modric, even with Benitez, they showed they were good players. Okay? Doesn't matter. If you have the quality, you show. Poor players and average players is a different issue. You have to put them in a climate for them to succeed and stuff. You cannot trust their individual gift of technique. So those players are not at the stand, generally not at our standards of Juventus, okay? The players, the coach has proved to be a standard of Juventus in the past. So I, you know what I mean. Like, okay, yeah. we lowered our standards, so we got to get a lower coach now. That's going to teach them football. Which that to me, that to me kind of always baffled me a little bit, right? Where it's like, I and we covered it in the IFTV uh rant that we did, right? Yeah, like a week and a half yeah, ago yeah. or so. And we're like, the fact that Juventus as a club needs to get a coach to teach Chiesa how to invert, cut in, and shoot or give Chiesa direction because that was their main argument is disgusting, in my opinion. Because Juventus, you know, before traditionally, everyone traditionally. traditionally had players that knew how to cook without people telling them how to cook. It was a collaboration. Well, they were already really... chefs. Yeah, they yeah, were that's what... already chefs. Yeah, the, the, their counter-argument is that football changed now. Now you have to dictate everything. No, it's just I guess the they... difference is, is like if you want to use this chef analogy, no, is you, that you currently don't. we're like – uh, a roadhouse where we just get guys out of college or, or high school and they don't really know what they're doing and they just dump a bunch of frozen uh, fish sticks in the fryer, right? right? Whereas if you go to like a Michelin star restaurant, which is like, you know, top of the world, what Juventus traditionally has been, you don't teach anybody at a Michelin star restaurant how to cook. They're already at the top of the game. They go in there and they cook. They shouldn't be working in a Michelin re restaurant if they don't know how to cook. But that's, that's where the happened. problem that's where the problem started already yes yeah. but we became a training school now yeah. we're having kids and stuff having players that aren't good enough just to fill in slots because we are financially handicapped so these three years of Almax Allegri for me it's simply by the by the management by everybody you get the top four we need the money for top four nothing else mm -hmm. they don't want anything else they don't want any trophies any UV history etc bullshit no they want the money because they know they're fucked if they don't get the money. And yeah, you know, with Max Allegri, there is no problem with top four. Always. On cruise control. On cruise control. Right now, imagine, we haven't won consistently two games in a row for eight games now. Okay? And we're still third. You know how insane it is? If you do yeah. that in Premier League, you're already like seventh or eighth. You're already taught him. <laughs> this is the history of the Tottenham. <laughs> oh man! All right, so I gotta read this out because I think we're fired up and, for this now. And and, and, and also let, let me just uh, jump oh, in sorry, on, yeah. on on a point. Look, in in the words of Neil deGrasse Tyson, Which in I order to, to change an podcast. objective truth. Oh, I, I listened to it too. He's a great listener. with William Shatner. Uh, in order you see that one? to change. Oh, I haven't watched that one yet, but uh, I will. Okay, watch, sorry, uh, I keep on cutting you out. No, no, yeah, you're you're so let him speak. <laughs> no, no, all good, all good, all good. No, no, like uh, in order to change an objective tr uh, truth, you have to come up with scientific evidence that that I test bullshit <laughs> doesn't work. If you come oh. to me with I test, I slap you with the uh, Chiesa heat maps. Like uh, we we are joking uh, I... here all the time. No, honest, honestly, honestly, I looked at at his heat map yesterday and compared to it to uh, to Vinicius Junior and Rafael Leao, and he plays equally as much left winger as those guys, and those are the most left wing guys Play, in left football. Winger, right they now. are left wingers. Yeah. So can we saying they are proper left wingers? Well, why do people have a thing against? Neil, like I understand. Neil, so Neil has not been. Uh, so the problem with Neil here is he's been pressed by by some folks and has fumbled a lot, and and he's kind of lost a lot of credibility here. People think he's kind of like a uh, a show or a script reader here in the United States because he went on Rogan, Rogan pressed him, and he couldn't come up with answers. He went on Patrick Bet David, Patrick Bet David pressed him, 
couldn't because the, the issue is is like when Neil deGrasse Tyson sticks on space and physics, he's amazing. Once yeah, he starts venturing off and other stuff and using his credentials as a scientist to give him the authority to speak on other shit, he looks really stupid, right? But so like, I got to give him that credit, though, because he typically, at least with his podcast, has been bringing in the experts in those fields. Yeah, and I think that's where he's kind of like done yep. it differently now, because like when he was going on these other podcasts, like, you know, you're trying like, for example, he's trying to talk to Jordan Peterson about psychology where Jordan Peterson is, you know, say what you want about him. But yeah, he's he super controversial as well. Yeah, he he's again, he's in that field of psychology or neil degrasse tyson it's like with all due respect he might have done psych 101 or something like that so neil degrasse tyson kind of going in and reading certain things or certain lines about different fields where he's not really that reputable in that field and then when someone challenges yep. him on that thought he kind of says no you're wrong i'm a scientist i know what i'm talking about that's kind mm -hmm. of rubbing people off the wrong way so he says, remember the saying, those who are unintelligent yell the loudest, and Dash has nailed it perfectly. Yeah, he, he didn't have a good run of uh of like podcast appearances and, and okay. it kind of it kind of put people off. But like I said, in his in his respective field about quantum physics, space, astronomy, all of that, yeah. incredible. And, uh, and honestly, I, I haven't listened to the other stuff. I do stick to like his his podcast where he does bring in the experts and let and they let them cook kind of thing yeah. but but even so like it was funny because the last one was shatner and shatner's like 90 and doesn't give a fuck and he, he kept on calling him out right because because uh neil does have some of those things where he'll like no no like and he tries to get his point as like are you shushing me did you just shush me <laughs> so like this old man shatner's i mean yeah yeah I mean, nobody's perfect and you do have to have a bit of an ego to to do that kind of thing so i i understand yeah he's, he's not great but as like a science educator Ah, whatever but this yeah, isn't it's, the it's like the same thing like for example if i this if is I, like the ng ntg uh, yeah uh, podcast. yeah 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 but and i mean like, okay yeah make it yeah, it's, terms. it's like if i went to misak and i started debating misak about medical stuff or health stuff and telling misak he's dumb and i'm right even though i have no experience in a medical field like that's pretty much what happened yeah wow. okay because the, the last person that uh fucked off neil in my life is also conspiracy theorist so <laughs> You know, you got to take certain things with a grain of salt. <laughs> that's, that's, how, that's how I feel about the Chiesa bots. The, those, we we got to fuck off the Chiesa bots. But... Okay. Uh, well, speaking of Chiesa, I'm getting this one out because yeah. I know uh, I know Trigger. Chiesa was deeply affected by the whistles from the fans when he was subbed off against Genoa since he has always had a special bond with the fan base. Speaking of snowflakes. With only two months left in the current season, Federico is aiming to be back in the center of focus and to be a leader on the field. Juve is also counting on him to guarantee the qualification of the UCL, a vital objective both from a sporting and economical point of view. In addition, the player born, I hate when they, we don't care when he's born, is determined to bring home a trophy, having contributed to winning the last Copa in 21, despite, uh, Ronaldo did that, despite the difficulties there are positive signals, the Italian has already scored seven goals, guys. One more and he'll, be, he'll match his best <laughs> record ever. As he's getting close to his personal best record. record. And, and, hey, and, and if we depend on him to bring us to Champions League, to the Champions League places, yeah? The dude is playing left winger. He has one fucking assist the whole season. One assist as a left winger. Yeah, I, I, the thing is with him, and when he goes to the right, he provides more to the box because but he can Vlaovic see. Which miss? He can yeah, see. Yeah, because 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 he can cross. He can use his right foot to cross, to do a cross, which he doesn't do for some reason. Every single time when he's yeah. on the left, he doesn't even cross. Where he can cross and put the ball nicely on on the plate. No, he it's, cuts in. He tries to shoot. It's because he can't see. I'm telling you, he has no vision. It's hilarious because it's and, like, <laughs> and, if he looks up, and the my thing biggest is, problem up, is my my point is if he looks up, he gets the ball where it should be. No, uh, if you if whenever he looks up, he raises his head, he takes a breath, and he looks at what's the situation. He puts the ball well, but he never does it. It's like always down and. Never up, never noticing what's going on, no, and then putting the ball across, and then going like, "Where are you?" <laughs> How many times I've seen Kiesa do this? 
<laughs> you have to cut it and uh, put uh, like a beeper next time when you're doing a show. Every time you see Kiesa doing. It's here, a meme. Here. It's a meme. It's a meme. <laughs> it's a meme. It's a meme. You're going to cut it and place it anywhere you want. Like we, we have to make it like uh, like famous somewhere with yeah. the Kiesa of like this with his eye a open. Drink, like, a, dr- like, a drinking you game. You couldn't see? You couldn't <laughs> see where the ball was going? He's like, not an inverted like, winger. That's why. <laughs> the guys are like, how can we see? You're not looking at us. <laughs> oh, man. Um, that's why Locatelli told him to fuck off. We should turn exactly. it into a drinking game. This could get fun. <laughs> they, you ah. would be plastered. You would be plastered. Yeah, to, right? to, 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 tomorrow we, like, we may need it against Lazio. One second. Isn't it like 2, 2 p.m.? Not 2, 2 p.m. 2, 8, uh, 10 p.m. Uh, 10 a.m. for you, Dave? The game? No, it's... Right now, it's no, 11. No, 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 no. The it's time. 11. Oh, it's 11. Ah. Drinking on 11 a.m. Oh, no, no, no. I mean for tomorrow. <laughs> ah, all right, it's, all right. it's, it's Easter, right? I'm supposed to yes. drink to celebrate. Happy Easter, the everybody. Of the Holy One. <laughs> yes. But tomorrow, today's Friday. Today's yes, good Friday. Friday. This is like the, this. I'm supposed ah, yeah, to be yeah. in like a somber mood right now. Ah, uh, yes, yes, of course. Sorry. Sorry, Jesus. Sorry, Jesus. <laughs> uh, I will repent my sin, but by drinking more. <laughs> Okay, Anyways, we're gonna piss some people yes, off. Yes, I think we, we, we discussed it completely. Like like I said, we're putting on a pedestal a guy that hasn't been deserved of being on the pedestal just because we don't have anybody that we can put yep. in a pedestal. You wanna know none of, them, none of them have the quality for it too, so that we can appreciate, you know. So that's a sad truth. And and that's what makes why the... people have to realize that we shouldn't we shouldn't give this much yeah. love and affection to these players before they show anything back before the club. And to make it even weirder, it's like a bunch of like 35, 40 year old dudes that are putting this. Dude, like, that is why. Isn't it weird? Sorry. That is so weird. That's that to me is so weird. <laughs> Where have they failed in their life? I for me, 15, 15 if you have this crazy obsession about players that aren't actually good enough, that great, I, I have a problem with your like you you have a, a relationship attachment issue, to be honest. I think what it I, is is they've failed. They feel that certain aspects of their life, most likely probably sporting or, or in some, maybe it's mm-hmm. their job, their shitty wife, who knows? Yeah. And and they're just like trying to compensate and, and get a nostalgia hit. And it, it's like, it's like uh, that guy's like, oh yeah, I made it to the juniors, but I got injured. I, I couldn't, I never that's made like, it. That's like every foreigner yeah. that comes and plays football here in the United States. <laughs> I was I was professional in my country, but I hurt my knee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was I was one of the best in my country. Anyway, but, but my point is like uh we grew up watching Alexander Del, Alexander Del Piero, even in our mid we had Paulo Dybala's good years and the first years where he was in still scoring 20 goals in his first year. From that to a guy that has scored maximum of 10, like that is the standard problem. The, the coach isn't the coach the uh, coach has no, some, something to I, do but th- that is a standard problem you're having and the reason isn't that the club is not ambitious the, the club is fucking broke that's the, that's the issue okay he, you just have to give it time to recover itself Kiza has more memes in a match to than me. he has goals in a season oh yeah <laughs> to me it's <laughs> hey, to me it's not even necessarily a standard problem that is just the mentality and what happens if you put a player over the club you are a player fan you're not a fan of the club you pick and choose the players you like you put them uh, on a pedestal and you lose the 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 overall view of, of the club if you stop putting these players on a pedestal then you will have an, uh, a broader look. You will know how the finances are. You know how uh, how the coaching is actually working out and th- that it's not necessarily only on the coach and the players are too, too dumb to execute. Yes, yeah. exactly. Maybe they should watch tennis. I, I'm out of words. Yeah. Uh, watch, yeah, tennis. They watch tennis. <laughs> it's the only players, right? Like yeah. You have one player fan and a player fan. Or Formula 1. Formula 1 too. No, there's That's still, important. there's there's like a thousand guys behind a team in Formula 1. But, I, I, I would but, argue but that. Do you, like, for example, does somebody support the, the tire changer on the right side, back I do. side? I do, yes, because I am a mechanic. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I, I, yes. I, I, yeah. Honestly, no, but honest, you know his honestly, name? Hey, hey, that is... 
Hey, that Will is marvelous engineering. That is marvelous engineering in Formula One. The pit stops. The guy that en engineered the wheel nuts. The guy that is changing the tires. Man, have you seen that sport. Red Bull video of the making of a bolt <laughs> and like the amount of yeah. people involved to make yeah. a bolt? Yeah. One bolt. Yeah. I know. <laughs> My many... point isn't that there. My point is, are you buying the guy's shirt, the one that changes the right-sided back wheel? That is my if, point. You know what? Yeah, I would. Fans. I would. If that guy, <laughs> if that pit crew had like a 1.3 <laughs> second stop, I'd be like, give me, give me that man's shirt. The I man. like <laughs> he's like, give me that man's shirt. I like the way he handles that nut. <laughs> yes. And he you know what? Enough, like, I'm gonna find out. Like... I'm gonna find out who the right rear wheel changer is for Ferrari, and I'm buying his fucking shirt. <laughs> Yeah. Dave's gonna fly out. He's gonna fly out to the next Grand Prix. Go to the and guy. Ask them, I what's need his your name? shirt. I need your shirt. And the guy's like, Why? <laughs> to prove a point. So, yeah. to kind of add on, like the last, the, the one player on Juve that has like a bunch of people slobbing him off that kind of creeps me out is Illing Junior. Yeah. That oh, I have like, I have news on him, by the way. Go for it. Yeah, he's getting sold. So, some. Some exclusive from yesterday night, uh, yesterday night Sky Germany uh, news. So there are five clubs on him right now that want him. It is um, sorry, I just pulled out the pulled out the list. So it's Tottenham, West Ham, ah, it's okay. Brighton and Everton, and who joined that race as well is Bayern Munich. Oh, they're looking for another Kingsley Coleman. A guy so that gets there are actually. Like 50% of the time. Hey. And and honestly, these young English players, even even if they if they get them for for cheap right now, I mean, how much will will we get from the talk is around eighty 20 to twenty five. Um, around eighty to twenty five million is what Sky reported what we uh, can get for him. And they will try to uh, to get him for for that cheap. And honestly, uh, like if he has one good season, they will sell him for eighty million. God knows to to uh, to another Premier League club. So, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much how Bundesliga has been making money, right? They'll yeah. buy they'll buy like some some Premier yeah. League French player, let him play a couple of seasons, make him look fucking incredible, and then boom, i.e. Sancho. Like like you'll have I stuff like that. I feel like, like he that. will go to the yep. Premier League. To be honest, I feel like his his English is that he directly goes to the Premier League. Yeah, and then he can go then to another bigger club. No, but 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 I feel like that. But 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 I can imagine. Like I don't believe hundred percent that that Bayern would get him. But I think if a club from the Bundesliga would get him, he, like he knows that Bellingham made the jump. He knows Sancho made the jump into the Premier League, right? And uh, I think he he may be interested in that. Uh, it's basically a, a sidestep that he does in order to uh, to get uh, to the Premier League. Yeah, maybe. But he, there's two choices: our bottom team in Premier League, or a team like that yeah. that can develop him. In my opinion, is yeah. you sell, it's okay to sell him in junior if you're not going to modify him to be a left back. And he will thrive in the Bundesliga as a left wing back, left back in the team. Because Bundesliga teams also try to play with 3 4 2 1, 3 4 3 variants. He can yeah. be a great left mid there. Yeah. Yeah. And it is too, it's very open the game. So it, it, it will make him thrive better. In Italy, he, he still does a bit, like he shows some moves, but he is not an out and out left winger. That's the problem. He is a left wing back. So you got to play yeah. with a three, a three at the back yeah. system to. Make him excel. So I have no problem with Illing, but just my opinion: if you're gonna sell him, put a buy, uh, put a, either a buyback or if not a buyback, put a percentage so that you get more money when he gets yeah. sold. Because yeah. I feel, I feel like he has, yeah. he has because he's English, he has value. Yeah, he's got the English tax, but you know it's funny because like for example, yeah. when he was on the international break, they played him as a left back, and I'm like, okay, well, there you go, Jay Twitter. He's he's not a left winger like everyone keeps thinking he is. No, he's a left back, and uh, yeah. And by the way, and by the way, the the reason stated why why Bayern wants him is as a successor to Alfonso Davies because uh, his uh, contract situa situation basically died completely with with Bayern, and uh, Real. Are gonna get Alfonso, like Alfonso what Sky in Germany at least reports uh, already negotiations with Bayern for him, so he would be ba the cheap uh, successor to to Davies basically. Yeah. Good luck to him. I 
I would have I, I would have liked to keep him, but if there, there's nothing wrong, like because we need to fi finish fixing our balance. Because uh, it's been how many years? Three, four, three years yeah. now that we're just trying to fix our balance. Like eventually there was gonna then come a point where you fold, you give out your cards, and you try to be successful. And Dave, Dave, scroll up, scroll up, Dave, <laughs> scroll up, Dave. Let, let, let's see the context of that. You open up Twitter, you see Real Madrid trying to sign Davies, Arnold, and Mbappe despite having a team full of talents. You scroll down a bit and you see Juventus inserted a 60 million release clause on their best player and talks about Chiesa leaving. Okay. In response to Romano. Is, uh, I'm not going to attack the person, Dude. but I think he's okay. A child. okay, okay, okay. Hold up, 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 hold up. Okay. Even. I can accept that you are dumb enough to understand the Bremer point completely wrong. But to throw Chiesa into that tweet, my god, that shows me you are a fucking retard. <laughs> oh, it's uh, fair time. I'm not going to attack the person because I don't know the guy, to be honest. But yeah, it's, it's a bad take. It's the idea. It's the idea. It's a terrible It's pitch. a bad take. It's, it's a, a very bad, bad, bad take. Okay, uh, because we uh, Juventus, open up other post? Juventus is broke. That is why Juventus is broke. If you do not understand that, then that's your issue. But the fact is Juve is broke. They are keeping only the cheap players because they're cheap. Okay, that, that is why. Oh, my Lord. Their goal is only to... Uh, what's the name? I got to say, we've never had a call to prayer on the live before. Yeah. Ah, you're listening. You're hearing yeah. the call to prayer. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm so used to it that I don't even I don't even notice. I, I'm like sitting there. I'm like, hey, but, I'm but, but, me, but me, but but like say hello because, to the mother. Uh, <laughs> because yeah, because the uh, what's the name, the masjid, which is the it means like the carpet place, but actually it means where they pray. It's just behind me. So it is. Uh, so everybody now knows that they can go and eat. Okay. So, well, it's, uh, I mean, it's a holy food. weekend for a lot of us, so it's it's cool. yes, it's something. It's cool. Okay. I so think, uh, I think this is the first time that we are having Easter and like Ramadan at the same time. Yeah, it's yeah. rare for that to happen. It is. It is damn leap years. Yeah. So this this one I kind of wanted to look but, at this but, one too. But not it's... but but not for me. East Easter is for me the first week of May, so I have a little. Your Yeah. Yeah, I gotta. You know. I'm Orthodox too, but my Armenian Orthodox still is this weekend. I gotcha. So this yep. one says Juventus. Armenian and Orthodox this is... are, are very, very close in the belief to us. Yeah. Exactly. So, they... I sorry for the de... talk over. <laughs> yeah, and sorry for the delay. We are talking over each other a little bit because we are all over the world. And there is a bit of a delay. So, we, you know, I wish one day what we can have like a studio. Where mm -hmm. he can talk together in the studio and then record there. One day. One day. Hopefully. One day. One day. Yeah. Like and subscribe and that'll happen. <laughs> like yeah. and subscribe. Keep and a coming, guys. Uh, so I kind of wanted to look at this because this is this is one of the most factually incorrect tweets you'll see. And, and you know, and people hold these tweets as like gospel. So Juventus FC is the only big club in the world where you can prove to be among the best players and perform very well consistently, and you're rewarded by getting sold. He going in 2018. So he going in 2018 was loaned out to compensate for the upgrade of Ronaldo. Uh, that that's not being sold. He was loaned to Milan and then loaned to Chelsea. Played back on the squad in 2019. He asked for a release to go play in Miami with his brother, and that's why he left. Uh, Ronaldo in 2021. Ronaldo asked to go, to leave. He to go, leave. and we needed him to go because we were bleeding dry. He was killing us for 60 million gross a season. Uh, Paulo Dybala contract his his car salesman uncle fucked up his contract negotiations, and the club. And he's like, got a release clause that has not been activated by anybody. At Roma, so it kind of goes to show. And Francesco Totti said, "Hey, I don't know if I want to give this kid a big deal if he's not going to be there all the damn time." Yeah, like, exactly. And then the Dibala the, the, the and stuff started cursing out Totti. No, Totti, how, how do you even dare talk bad about the guy? He is factually correct. He is factually right. Sorry to interrupt you. No, you're good. Also, Morata, 2022. Was a loan fuck? player. He was here on a loan. And he you, went back. We, we never we owned Morata. It. We never owned Morata. <laughs> this like, is so dumb. Always, <laughs> it's bait, brother. Aziz is bait. Simply, he's a bait. This, this is bait. This he knows what he's bait. doing. He, ma yeah. he's master baiter. That, <laughs> Dash, do, do you want? Do you want <laughs> me? Like do you that, want me to like cook? Just baiting like the fish. Go ahead, German Dave. <laughs> 
Dash, do you want do you want me to kill that tweet immediately? Cook, I'm done. Cook. All right. Which is, which is the universally known number one team in the world right now? Madrid. Real Madrid. Man is Manchester City in that discussion too? Sure. Yeah, not as much. Right. Yeah, you can discuss it. Okay, okay. So sorry, sorry. Then the right now second most most successful team. Sorry. Okay. All right. So, do do you want to know who they saw uh, sold the past couple of years? Gundogan. Sterling. Yes. Hey, he, no, he went yeah. on the free. He's not even on the list because he went on out on the free. They sold Sterling for fifty six million to Chelsea. Ferran Torres for fifty five to Barcelona. Gabriel Jesus for 52 million to Arsenal, Sané to, for 52 uh, to uh, Bayern, Cole Palmer for 47 to uh, to Chelsea, and Danilo to us for 37, Sinchenko for 35 uh, to the uh, to Arsenal. Arsenal. So, dude, they sold their best players in the squad. They gave Cancelo because they don't want him anymore away on two loans consecutively to Bayern and to Barcelona because they don't want him anymore. And people are talking about us being a selling club. Manchester fucking city is selling everybody and their soul if they don't want them anymore. Yeah. The, oh, the but, but, but you were one of the right? biggest clubs in the world is selling their, their best players. Brother, fucking idiots. Uh, uh, idiots. <laughs> They were, forget about the Aziz and all the but Frankie, uh, the thing is now you have the option. If you have a blue tick, if you subscribe to Twitter, you can even turn off the blue tick. Yeah, that's that's also an option you have. So maybe he was farming engagements, but on, on down low. Yeah, even though if you don't like my point is even if you don't show the blue tick, you can get still get the money. And yep. 11.3k saw the tweet, so he made his falafel sandwich for free. <laughs> and and, and, by, and by the way, <laughs> and, and by the way, even Real Madrid is selling its best players. They they sold Ronaldo to us. They sold Di Maria to to Menu. They sold Casemiro to Menu. They sold Morata to Chelsea and Ozil, Ozil to, to Arsenal. Arsenal. So I, I can go go on and on, but my God, the biggest clubs in the world are also great selling clubs because they don't they, because they know when to sell the players. Exactly, at their peak, they sell them. They know like they notice when the player has yeah. reached its limit. Like that's the maximum. Okay, cashing on. Yep, that's Atalanta for you, best selling club in Italy. Exactly, for that's why I'm like with Coop Miners, I'm getting worried of the Atalanta curse. That's why I'm like. If we get 45 million, the second one, I would honestly go for Kefren Tura, personally. I, even I, though I, even though numerically he doesn't match at all with Coop Miners, like if you look at rough numbers, like Coop Miners is, has insane numbers, but I 100% know that, I, I'm guaranteed statistically, that he is boy. a com more complete player. So we need that, and the quality of Juventus. This is this is good. Frankie's Frankie, cooking. Yeah, Frankie just sent me this. I'm gonna I'm gonna share this. Uh, you guys are gonna get a laugh it's, out of this. So, oh, you got it. Yeah, yeah I got, you got it. it. You got it. Oh so lord, this just came out. Oh lord. Oh my god. <laughs> we Brother, gotta clip this. Oh, the oh fuck my up, god. Zito, Zito. <laughs> 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 oh my this god. This isn't a battle against racism. There was no racism on the pitch. I'm not racist. My idol is George Oh Wea. my god. Oh my god. I'm not racist. I have a black friend. It's saying I'm not That's exactly what it is. <laughs> I'm not racist. Yeah. Oh my god. That is, okay. that is horrible. You know what's fucked up? More oh fucked up. Because this is just the first quote. You know what's the second quote he said? If but, we're going to stop but, cursing, cursing people on the pitch and then you should also it means that we should also stop cursing the serbians like yeah retard you should stop yes. cursing the serbians as gypsies but, 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 but he just said that like <laughs> oh, so, well, now it's okay because they make fun of gypsies yeah, yeah it's, like, it's okay to make fun of the, 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 the black oh people my God. just because we also make fun it is okay because we, it is already okay to make fun of serbians because we call them gypsies no 
calling the Egypt, calling certain Egyptians is not okay. Okay, and, it and, is not and, okay in the first place. And, People and are it, getting banned. And from- IFTV's credit, they did say <laughs> they gave the face palm. So in their credit. No, I'm I'm not gonna. I, I have to rare IFTVW. It. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 not it's not something I have to hear related. But actually, me, Jesus Christ, man, you're an old guy. You have played with a lot of black people. Like let let Marcus Turan explain to you. Maybe you're not understanding what the fuck you're saying, man. How was <laughs> who's doing this man's PR? He is doing it himself. Like yeah, he are asking it. If they like, don't I'm have speaking. PR, that's the. Fr- mm-hmm. Hey, that's the, the problem is. Hey, the the problem is Inter is a Inter is a provincial club. They don't have PR and things like that. They just let the players talk and do whatever they want. <laughs> like you can't see that ever happening at Juve. Juve would slap the shit out of you. Like the Juve manager oh, would yeah. slap the shit out of you. You'd be gone. Oh, they yeah. got they got mad that I had a beer on my shelf when I was doing a live stream. Like nah, even man, though, like I have a Juve beer. <laughs> an actual UV beer that I bought in Torino sitting on my shelf. They're like, it's <laughs> funny if it's that because Inter, if you know the history of Inter, it is a club made of. It, it became Inter just because they were allowed, they, they wanted to make a group of players from different nationalities. Okay. That is why it was Inter from different backgrounds. While Milan wanted to be the pure white guys. Okay. That's why made, they made Inters and they called themselves brothers of the world. Okay. This doesn't work with Inter. Like, the, the whole concept of Inter Milan doesn't work at all when you have a guy like this working. That also got a contract extension after the fact that he was clear. He got the contract extension until 2026. And then after he got the contract extension, they started asking him more questions. And it's getting more obvious that he fucking said it. <laughs> he actually said it. And he's he's doubling down, and now with the Serbian t- thing, he's tripling down on it. Like, oh, it's okay. I, I can call Serbian gypsies. I still remember the first part, like when he was like asked. To uh, I have black friends as well. Blue. He's like, I'm gonna beat you black and blue. Like, I'm like, who says that to somebody? Who says also, that to somebody? Also, also, I remember that one shot in the video, in the camera during the game of him of Juan Jesus just going and uh, like. Telling him, what did you say? Like, uh, why are you calling me like a racist slur? Like, I'm not racist. Pointing at Marcus Turam there, walking back. Like, I'm not racist. I have Turam as my friend. <laughs> I was dying laughing, man, because it's so absurd. <laughs> and, and you know what's worse? There, there is actually a journalist hired by Gazetta that promoted everybody yep. to wear blackface in support of Juan Jesus. Like, yep. How out of touch yep. are you people, to be honest? Like, it's not like taking the knee. No, you're going to cover yourself as blackface. Jesus Christ, man. That's, Jesus. That's did, did they ask Trudeau to do that? Okay. You know, <laughs> <I'm sorry>. <laughs> hey, they, they, they should sell him to Lazio. They should. Oh, Speaking yeah. of which... We've guys, never... We we've gone an hour and 13 time. minutes and we have not even hey. touched on this. <laughs> And and just because hey, but, this but, is but the but but what a segue, what a what segue, a segue. <laughs> and because this is the international panel, I have to do the most Canadian thing right now and check on my maple syrup so it doesn't boil over. But you guys take this one away. I'll be right back. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably one of the more fun lives with all of us just doing this together because we got yeah, man. so bad. I, I, I sent you I, dash. This I sent is, you dash for the journalist, the Italian journalist that works in Zetta, and that said like. Ah, we should uh, try to be everybody next match should do blackface in support of Juan Jesus. Yeah, here we go. I got it. Give me one second. Just uh, press the translate button so that everybody yeah. also reads it. No, I got it. I'm just going to make it uh, look good enough to throw it on the stream so people can actually like read it themselves. All right, here we go. Bam. Okay, so uh, this is from Carlo Laudicia, I think. Uh, yeah, so it Carlo says- Laudicia. So the shadow of racism between Inter and Napoli defenders. Uh, The decision on a disqualification is up to judges. The uh, Travisio precedent. uh, When Omolade's companions dyed themselves in black to show solidarity for their companion. What if Francesco did it too? Dude. Dude. That looks so bad. No. 
Oh, oh my god. That oh looks god. so bad. You think oh. it's bad, but it, if you look at the zoom in, it's even worse. I know. Oh, like, here, let me see god. if I can get in. No, I can't. Hey, oh they, the thing is, their heart is in the right place. Maybe. Like, no, I support also my hey, but... Like that. But, but, but this historically is bad. That's not good. It's oh, historically no. bad, and my God, hey, the heart is at the right place, at the right place, at place at the wrong time. <laughs> my way, God, my God that is horrible. That is a what in the ass. In the wrong moment. way. This is only Man, that is so to tone deaf. Moment. It I... is only Italian football. Like, how out of touch are Italian? Uh, Laura, I, think, I, think I love Italians, but the, the original Italian, I, it's a kind of, it's like, it's like their heart is in a pure place. They, they want to be good. But the way they show it is like it's in the 1900s. That's how I feel when I when I read what they do. It's, it's now, the new generation, I think no, the new generation is very aware, like our age and stuff are very aware and they understand that no blackface historically means as a, a way to show uh, lessening of the of the African race and you know what comes with blackface and yeah. the whole marketing situation. Everybody is aware of it now, but the people that are above forty, like in their fifties, they think that uh, blackface is just uh, solidarity and like you are trying to imitate your idol. Anyway, yeah, that, that Dave, you missed it. What a mess. You missed the entire Italian roster. In is, is the is the maple syrup okay? It is. Yeah, I had it on low, so she she's good to go. Um, All right. Uh, before we start going full fascist here, uh, let's get into some Lazio Juventus here. So this is going to be the lineup. Obviously, uh, Dusan being a dumbass and getting himself suspended uh, does not help us offensively. Offensive line of Keen and Chiesa, uh, your midfield five of Cambiasso, McKenny, Locatelli, Rabio, and Kostic. Uh, thank God Kostic is starting over Illing. Uh, just reasons. It's the same for me. Because it's also bad, to be honest. It, I have, it's it's two I'm, I'm shifts. Which that. one smells better of this week? Yeah. What it is. Uh, for me personally, what I would uh, let's read it all, then I will tell you what I would have fixed right. with. Backline of Gatti, Bremer, and Danilo with Chesney in the in between the sticks. Okay. So uh, how I would have changed simply is put Cambiasso on the left, McKenna is right wing back, and put Miretti because Miretti for the last two three games is showing some improvements, not all, but he's showing better. He's linking up better. So at least I I I'll get the guy that on an upward trajectory than guys that are on the downward trajectory. No, I got you. Uh, that's that's fair. Uh, the only difference I would do from you is I would take Kiesa, put him on a train to uh, Florence, and leave him there. Uh, but... I'll play Yulis next to Keith. Yeah. That's that's what I would but want can, to do. But can yeah, somebody can. give us for 40 million for, for leaving him in the I train mean, or something like that? that? Yeah, I don't want it for free. Well, I, we can use it as a tax. We can use it as a tax write-off donation to the city of Florence. Um, Let's see. He's an art now, piece. An un, now, Igor, a misunderstood Igor, art piece. Igor Tutor is a... We know who he is. We know I, how he plays. And it's the first match. He's going to come in. It's going to be super high pressure. And by the They're way... Not he had three weeks to prepare for this game, uh, which is why I'm so so scared about it. Yes, yeah. I think. Go ahead, uh, if you get the tie, it's okay for me. Just, just yeah, go along. So you've got this right. So you have the, and this might be a little bit different for Lazio, right? Because Lazio went from a four-three-three to a, a three-four-two-one or three-four-three. It's a loose three four three, but the one thing that I'm expecting Tudor to do is I'm expecting him to send Gunduzi or Cataldi to disrupt Locatelli, because Locatelli is terrible under pressure. You put Locatelli under yeah. pressure, he'll cower behind the center back and force the center back to go forward, and and that's one of the biggest gaps and one of the biggest frustrations I have with Locatelli's game. Uh, Chiesa is going to be harassed by Marosic or by Anderson, depending on what side they end up playing. Which is interesting that they're playing Anderson as a as a right wing back here, but uh, Keza essentially they're going to throw Keza. They're going to give Keza the left corner, force Keza into a corner, and essentially Keza is going to get taken out of the game instantly with this it's lineup. Inter it's interesting that Anderson is playing a wing back because he is linked with us, and if we stick to a five midfield, and uh, I don't think Anderson will start as a wing back. Maybe so maybe either. as a winger, like maybe Alberto. I think I think it'll be either if Anderson starts, it's in, it's going to be in Alberto's position. 
but, but I think they get they got that guy. I forgot who what what was his name. The Italian guy. Uh, Pellegrini. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm joking. <laughs> no, the, the fuck, no, the other guy that was very fast was very good back in the day. <laughs> Not back in the couple of years ago. But was, <laughs> as I say, yeah, remember that young yeah, yeah, wing back, that wing back, a wing back. He was a wing back. So I don't think it's Anderson because defensively he's weak. Yeah, it was I, not I a weak that they have. I would be shocked if two. He's still place. on the team, you're saying? So yes, he's yes. Still like Lazio team. He's Italian. Oh, get out of here! Accept. I don't want to accept. Right. Don't want to accept. accept. Ah, oh, okay. Ah, uh, here we go. They have Marosic as one. They have another person. Uh, Lazzari, 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 that guy. Sorry, there Lazzari. you go. Yeah, right. Honestly, I think he is the guy that's gonna start. Yeah, I would but, think so too. Either him or Husai, one of the two. And honestly, yeah, to, to 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 me, to me, it looks like to me, it looks like Fotmob got, just got also the the formation a little bit too wrong because if you pull back uh, Marusic, you have a, a four man backline and Philip Anderson under Anderson as the winger. Yeah, so it's basically we won. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, it doesn't. Yeah, I, I think maybe, much, maybe so. Alberto doesn't play. Maybe I feel like Alberto doesn't yeah, play. Three, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Or or he goes uh, Alberto as a CM a center mid, with if he wants after attacking like CM and then Anderson as the right winger, Takani as the left winger, and he will be up front. See, maybe this, this is me saying this, but I don't think Alberto is a two door player. No, he doesn't press. Yeah, you see, I don't. I, that's why I don't see him starting. And if he does, it would be a false nine. Maybe after, like they change it up. Let's say uh, they go for a three, four, one, two with him in the hole. Yeah, that's the only time I would see him because it's just the role that Alberto's playing in this lineup is that yeah. he has to press yes. on Rabio and Kostic, and he's not. He has to press, press on defenders too. Yeah. He's gonna be pressing on Danilo or Bremer, depend Danilo mostly. Yeah, I, I think the job. I think the one thing tactically to watch out for this match is you're going to watch Gunduzi on Locatelli. I think Gunduzi is going to harass Rabio. Rabio has to protect him because Rabio should cancel out Gunduzi because they're both like the same freaks. Yeah, it's, yeah, they're physical mo French monsters. Yeah, <laughs> for me, for me, this game is going to be dictated on how well Locatelli is able to transition the ball. And for me, I've I've lost all faith in Locatelli's transitioning it was ability. Yeah, like it's as as you've said it yourself, it is a square peg in a round hole. Um no, like yeah. I, I'm not, you know, look for me, I'm not trying to start the hate Locatelli train, but for all the folks that keep saying that this guy's being hindered or whatever, no, no, he he's he's not. This this is what he is. Like he needs he's not a he's not a ball play, he's essentially another Rabio in a sense, right? Just not as physical as Rabio. Like Locatelli doesn't have the tangibles. You watch Italy with Locatelli playing. You watch Italy versus Jorginho playing. Jorginho facilitates the attack, facilitates everything, organizes players, move here, cover this, do this. Locatelli says, here, Scalvini, take the ball forward. That, that's, that's what Locatelli does. It's the same thing here. Bremer, dribble the ball 40 yards forward because I can't do anything myself. Too timid. All right. Uh, Allegri things he said can, uh, I, can i just add something to frankie's point because i'm a little bit uh, scared oh, yes. about zakani yeah we're also uh, linked to him as well yeah that's the other name i, I couldn't remember his name the other night but that's the guy Sorry. yes yeah. we hear you it, uh, it, it was a little bit uh, laggy for me. You know, I just wanted to add, I'm a, a little bit scared uh, as well about Zakani, honestly, which is why I would have put Danilo on the, as a right center back, just to be a little bit uh, more, uh, more sure on the on the back line and play Rugani as, uh, as the left uh, center back next to Bremer. Maybe. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. Zakani last year was great, but this series has been poor. I think it's just the that that whole Lazio team has been poor this year. They've just all kind yeah. of taken a step down. Which when we get through this and we get and I kind of want to touch on Moto before we sign off at the end, just to kind of give folks a little bit of like a tactical thing of what Mota does. But Dave, go ahead and get through the uh, presser here. Okay, I'll just uh, hit this off quick. So uh, everyone's back from the international break. 
Everyone's healthy. Uh, and it's a 55 day sprint to the finish. So basically we're focusing in, uh, two months, just less than two months. He also touched here on Samuel Illing Jr. He's played a lot this year. We think highly of him and he's growing a lot. I am happy with what he does. Sold. I, he's, so, he's selling them. Yeah. He's, uh, bye bye. That's the advertisement right there. So <laughs> expect a lot from Moisey. He wants to do well to earn a place with Ilya at the Euros. He's sold physically. Sold. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh, you guys are ruthless. Focus on objectives. Uh, we're all focused on the end of the season. Yeah, basically saying we know we've sucked. We haven't picked up a lot of points. We also have the cup. Uh, let's we, we still we still got to work at this. There's lots to play for. Translation: My job expectation is top four. If you don't like it, suck my mm -hmm. nuts. Yeah. This is an excellent abridged version of this. Uh, 500 games as a coach, Champions League goals. Yeah, so he has actually reached 500 games here. Uh, he's on that top list now. Uh, and it's evidence of my desire, passion, and love for the job in this sport. I want to have fun, and still, I love being out on the pitch. For now, we need 70 points to reach the Champions League. Uh, 59 isn't enough. No, it's not. No, it's not. So, so, so let's let's <laughs> let's have because because in respect to Misak's time, because Misak does have to leave. Misak, you yes. want to give any kind of final thoughts before you drop the mic? For Zayuve, I hope the guys wake up. I guess uh, we just need to finish and get to the crowd to the finishing line. Okay, we just have to win. I don't care about performances anymore because we're at the end game. Wrong time. Let's go. Bye bye. <laughs> right. See you. That that he's gone. He's uh, he's gone. It's always a pleasure when we have him here. Uh, that was fun. This was uh, kind of like a super stream, huh? Almost in a sense. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. There is stuff on Tudor too. I don't know if anybody do we care about what Tudor said. Is there is there anything? I I, I don't follow that at all. Sir. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> it's lots. Of uh, I mean, it's just interesting because they're obviously talking about a little bit. Uh, it's it's a storyline at UV. Yeah, it's a storyline thing that they're trying to do to get more yeah. eyes on it. Yeah, uh, that's that's just in Fop Mob. So if you guys do want to look at it, Tudor does have a bit of an interview if you are so interested. But yeah, yep. we won't beat that horse. Yeah. By the way, I actually li like Tudor a lot, man. We would have needed a guy like that uh, that kicks uh, the butts of our players. I was going to say, he beat the shit out of Kiesa. Yeah. And do something. And, and even Vlaovic. Yeah. 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 Well, I think we've covered practically everything. I kind of wanted to touch this before uh, to all the Allegri outstands is research Tiago Monta's coaching philosophy. And if you can answer and tell me what the 272 means, then I'll know that you did your research on him. But uh, it's going to be a very, very pragmatic. It's a horizontal 272. So in trans translation, I think that's like a 4141 or something like that. But uh, look... We've we've had Misak go on it. We've had you, the other two here go on it. You guys, the one thing we need to do better as a community, as a fan base, and I'm not saying you guys, the viewers, because you guys have been excellent and the discussions in the comment, but uh, I know that you guys will get harassed by trying to have a civil conversation with some of these folks on social media and Jeff stuff like that. It. Jeff, Jeff likes it. Jeff likes Jeff loves yeah. to bait though. Jeff <laughs> Jeff is a troll. It's probably because he's Albanian. Um, but I uh, I rest the case there. But understand, guys, like. If someone is coming at you, giving you stuff where it's very skewed or it doesn't make sense, don't engage. Just walk away. Save yourself yeah. the stress and the and the headache, right? Because us three, we're going in our group chat where we're looking at stuff like get a load of this dumbass or look at this or look at that where it's just like we look at stuff and it's just kind of like I understand being a fan and a fanatic. But for me, like, for example, I have a different expectation, for example, from like a Frankie and a Bones versus a date like the two Daves, right? Because these two are making videos, they're appealing to a mat, or they're essentially sending a video out to multiple people. Multiple people are seeing it, and it's like you gotta have you gotta have your stats checked, right? You gotta double check your stuff. Versus like an individual person on Twitter, right? It's different. And, and for me, and for Dave and German Dave, I think one of the biggest issues that we've been having recently is that you'll have a bunch of content creators that are going out that aren't really vetting what they're saying. They're just spewing stuff out without really doing research. It's just really, really lazy work where it's like, you know, I feel that this isn't working because Allegri's ruining someone or like this and where it's like, 
let's break it down. Let's look at it. Like, for example, I had someone tell me that, hey, the heat map doesn't tell the entire story. No, 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 it doesn't. A heat map can't tell the entire story of certain things. Like, for example, you have to take into account the way that the balls are being played to the player and other other factors that go into it as well. The reason why I use the heat map argument is because I wanted to go after the argument that people keep saying he's not played in his preferred position, where it's like that that negates, that debunks that whole theory. What I want to say and leave you guys with is look at things objectively. Look at different things. Us three here, we're not Allegri in. We're not Allegri out. We're, what's the alternatives? Does the alternative make sense? Where is the club currently? Can the club afford things currently? It's being able to take all those different bits and data points and those, those other discussions to have a, a well-balanced opinion. Because at the end of the day, the three Ds here are not Allegri fans. We're not Chiesa fans. We're not Ronaldo fans. We're not Bremer fans. We're not Chesney fans. We're not Juntoli fans. We're not John Elkin fans. We are fans of the J. For us, we want the J to be successful, sustainable, and to give us great moments. Whether who's in that J doesn't matter to us. As, I mean, the only time it does matter is if they're running it into the ground. Then we're going to be like, yo, what the fuck's going on? If, if they're a net negative to the J. Yes. We're never going to take an individual over the J. Because I don't I don't know what people say about us as a, as a group, as a content creator. Frankly, I don't care. If they want to say something, come to us directly and say it instead of, you know, whatever. But we're not stands to individuals or players or coaches or whatever for us it's the club that's all that matters we don't care about anything else like unfortunately yeah it's a cold-hearted approach and some people would be like oh well Juve uh blah 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 is you know not treating their legends and yada 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 look if you're not negative to the club adios man i don't care what you did you gotta go because there's that saying that has been said you either die a hero or you live long enough to be the villain sometimes people's ego wants to make them live long enough to be a villain so, fortunately, sometimes you got to cut ties with things. And I leave you with that because yeah. it's early and we still have to get lunch and other stuff. <laughs> All that good stuff. Yeah, just quickly, I have like a little analogy for the whole thing, right? You, you have to try to paint a picture, right? You're never going to have all the stats, all the facts, the data, and everyone has their own biases, right? But you're trying to get as broad of a palette as possible to tell a story. Uh, and, and to make that story as accurate as possible, right? It, in a sense, it's like a painter taking all his paints, like trying to get his idea and portraying that idea in, in full color, in as vibrant of a palette as he possibly can. That's as, you know, as, as fulfilling as possible in a sense, right? The, the best artists are able to use color and light and shadows. It, it's like that. It's taking all these different yep. elements and trying to pray, portray something. It doesn't mean that we're always going to be right or wrong. And, and when you have a conversation with somebody else, it's not about being right or wrong with that person. It's just trying to paint this picture together. And that's all it is. Yes, 100%. And also, just uh, as a last point, this will not only help you in, in the football community, in the sports community, this will help you in every facet of life. Be careful of the content you you consume. Be careful and look up that uh, so that you know what they are talking about. Research the facts. Make you up your own opinions. Don't just be be sheep and follow uh, follow people or channels that are willing to go over dead body to get cheap reactions and views. Those will honestly take important time out of your life and also will completely change your, your mood have a negative impact on yourself so just know what you watch be careful with that and that is my advice and ask as questions always, think critically yeah and as always uh challenge us if there's something that we say that you think uh is worth the challenge then absolutely i mean yeah. uh, please don't. expect, yeah, expect please. a little bit of a uh a, a back and forth of, perhaps yeah, <laughs> you no know, well you know and, and i think some people that have commented have kind of learned that right you come at us with stuff we'll come at you with stuff 
we'll come at you hard if you come at us hard. We'll come at you with numbers if you come at us with numbers. It's it's just it's you get yeah. you get what you give. That's kind of how we handle it, right? We've never ran from anyone asking us a question or something like that when it comes to the footballing. We sense. reply we always, to every comment. Every, we, we do. Everything. We reply to every discussion. If we think the discussion's worthy enough, we'll bring you in live. We've done it before. We've had someone in the chat that said something. We're like, come here, give us your opinion. Let's let's listen to what you got to say. But if you come, if if we give you that stage, and then you give us nothing, then we're coming at you. And no, Guido, this isn't a dig at somebody, unless you want to consider like hundreds of people that were. Yeah, th this is. We've all been kind of on edge the past few weeks. It's partly because of the international break. Um, you know, it, we've just seen a lot of it, and we've seen the community divided because of it. It's and, tribalism. And that's not what we want. It, it is tribalism. And we're, we're trying to move yeah. away from that. Yeah, we're, we're kind of so Guido to answer your question. So like, for example, there's been a lot of tribalism that's going on, whether it's like, for example, people supporting a coach or people supporting a player. And, and for us, really, we're yeah. kind of disappointed in content creators that aren't saying ask questions. Right. Or like, for example, I understand if like, you know, the random schnob on X or whatever is like being tribalistic. It is what it is. Right. Not everyone can think critically. But when you have people that are essentially having large platforms that are talking to people that are, you know, having an audience and then they become tribalistic. Instead of encouraging, hey, let's look at the thing, how things are both sides, because this isn't. This goes across the board on everything, right? It's it's even beyond football. You can start looking at like yep. different podcast hosts or stuff like that. It's just this this shift in the sports world where it because it becomes so tribalistic because people aren't asking questions and it's not like, hey, why are things the way that they are? Can we fix things? Is there an adjustment? Because the idea is is for us and for you or for other content creators and their viewers, try to find common ground instead of trying to build this cult because. If you put Dave, myself, and German Dave on a pedestal, please don't. We don't like that. It seems very corny and really weird. We're just three guys that like to talk about sports. But we're also going to read up. And if you tell us that we're wrong, then... I mean, and we've done it where people have corrected. I know Ellie, for instance, she's always correcting us. Yeah, we've always had people we're... that have corrected us on stuff. And we don't yeah, we're going to put your comments up and say, okay, correction. This person, uh, this person's right. You screwed up. Yeah. That's it. That's all we're saying is just... I no, mean, look, we 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 don't pretend to be perfect or to know everything. We give you just our opinions on the facts we see, on the numbers we see, on the impact on the team we see, on the finances the, the team has uh, can work with. We give you our opinion based on the facts we know. We don't know who the coach will be. We don't know which player will get sold. We are working with what we have right now. So... If we are wrong about something, of course you can call that out, uh, call that out. We are we aren't perfect, just like nobody else is. So, yeah, yeah. And the regulars, I mean, you guys are always throwing stats. You, you know, I'm I'm kind of dumb at time, and my my head somewhere else, and I can't remember a name or a date. I mean, it's again, it's it's a community. We're, yes, we're that's in it what together. we're going for. We're we're not in it to be famous or to get clout or to get anything like that. This is because, like, for example. Frankie and Jeff wouldn't have met each other if it wasn't for the community that we built here. German Dave and myself and Canadian Dave, we wouldn't have all known each other. Same thing with Bones, same thing with KB, uh, Misak as well. Like all of the people that are here that talk with each other, that contribute with each other. JC as well, that goes back a little bit. Yep. Yeah, so it's we've built a platform where people can come in and talk. That's that's what we have wanted to do. And that's what's always yep. going to be the objective. That's it. Yeah, we're here to have a conversation. And sometimes it seems really one way because that's the platform. It's us talking to you. But call in Saturday. Call that's why Saturday night we have the call in show. That That's why we have the call in show is because we don't want to yep. force us down your throat necessarily. We want to give other people the chance to do so. So that's it. I mean, I, th I think uh, we've waffled on them. That's a bit of a soapbox, guys. I think so. I so emotional. I'm tearing. I need napkins. And 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 also and also and also by the way, oh, alrighty. <laughs> what is that? Oh, and also just the 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 best uh, consent you can have you can have comes from actual verbal discussions. So you can chime in on Saturdays. We can have a nice talk with each other. 
And yeah. We'll Beautiful. clear up the air then. Beautiful. All right, Dash. Take this one away. I don't want to steal his thunder. He did an outro. What do you okay, want? Okay, that's it, guys. He heard enough from us. We will see you guys tomorrow for the live watch along. Uh, and otherwise, I mean, if you're doing the uh, the whole holy thing, I mean, enjoy. Have a good day, guys.